let's let's read the scripture for today. It comes from the Gospel of John, starting with chapter 14, verse 15. Listen carefully for the word of God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know the Spirit of truth because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I'm, I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God for it. I was saying that things are changing, and um, I'm spending a lot of time, uh, well, more time, I wouldn't say a lot of time, reading articles, uh, both, I find myself reading the science journals I used to read some 20 some years ago, 30 years ago, and the, and the and the, and the peer magazines and the peer journals that are uh, in ministry that I read, have been reading, and reading from sources of information such as the Pew Institute and Duke Divinity School. Those are two regular sources that give me journal, give me journal articles to, to read that have to do with the church. And the ones I was reading before this pandemic got too far along, back in early March, late February, um, as people were beginning to shut down, as, people, as churches were talking about, what if we close? The articles were reading something along the lines of, this is, the, this is going to be the demise of the small church. They don't have the money as it is to keep going, and when people stop coming, when, when they have to close their doors, they won't be able to uh, have the offering plate go around, and that lack of money will force a clothing, closing. They talked about how people will become used to not going to church on Sunday, and so those that were in the habit will have lost it, and the numbers will decrease, and following the actual decline around the world about religious and faith uh, interest, finally, those small churches will have no, no groups, no, no congregation. And around the mid-March, we found those articles just plentiful. But I've been reading in the last week and a half that instead of decreasing interest, there is more interest. And not just in the Christian church in America, but in all faith. Religious groups are beginning to find that they have more people watching in on their on their services even though they are distant or participate or, or digital more people who are engaging in the spiritual life learning more trying to gather more information more people seem to be becoming more in tune or looking for a spiritual experience in this time than um, than ever than before for instance in Britain which when I was in seminary I think they had maybe 10% of the population was involved in a church so that's in the early 90s uh, it had gotten in single digits I think by the 2000s well they've increased now it is one out of four folks in Britain are engaged in watching church digital church and we're talking about church not spiritual gurus or anything we're talking about 
faithful church, the Anglican church, the Catholic churches, Presbyterian churches, the churches over there, and digitally they're, they're, they're chiming in, they're, they're looking in, and they're even watching specials on television, documentaries and stuff. Their interest is blooming. Articles are being looked through to the tune of one out of every four. One out of every four persons in Britain now are involved in gleaning information and in participating as much as you can in a digital spiritual world. The fastest growing group in that, the ones who have the largest number of people, one out of every three persons between the ages of 18 and 34. That beats one of it out of every five of the folks that start at 55. In other words, the big group that's powering this is a generation below mine. Actually, two generations below mine. Now, I say all of this to put things in perspective in that when we hear our scripture today talk about and this is Jesus talking to his disciples you don't I mean other people won't know it but you will know it I am not leaving you alone I will not leave you orphaned alone listless without connection I will not disappear from you but I'm going to send someone who will bind us together. And not just me. You will be bound to God the Father. And it will be done through the Spirit of God. And that will connect you with me, the Father, and with each other. It is an emphasis of Christianity that everything is communal. This is Jesus saying, I'm going to bind you together with God. We will all be together in God. Not when you die, but now. Others will not see it because they don't know me. You know me. You'll see it. Well, I think Christ is making, well, I don't mean this literally, of course. But I think God is very present in the world. I think God is being seen more and more. For one thing, we don't have the distractions. We're not all able to find some place to go and something to do and keep us, you know, to keep our minds occupied. We actually are down to what we have. And what we have is technology that allows us to be with each other through digital means. And all that uses up. Very, that's going up very high well I don't know how high but I know that it's going up the last things I heard that the, the increase was a definite significant increase in digital use and I can believe it with all the new apps that are coming out so I have to also think that with the stillness God is not letting that go to waste with our having nothing else to distract us. I think we're beginning to see God. And those that have just noticed are realizing that God connects them to a greater a greater community. That's what God seeks. When I first went to seminary, I'll try not to get off on too much of a tangent, but when I first went to seminary, I went with the idea of I am an individual. I, I have my own way of looking at God. I am this way out, out of the box person, spiritual person, and surely I just, I don't need anybody else. I've always been a loner, I've always been independent. And then I went to seminary and was told constantly, you can't be a Christian outside of community. You can't be a Christian outside of community, which for my my very introverted, very not wanting to be around a lot of people self, was really disturbing. Sure I can. 
I can be out in nature and be next to God. Now that's fine, it said. That's fine. But that's not Christianity. Jesus sets up from the get-go a community. Jesus starts his ministry by coming down from the out of the wilderness and grabbing folks and saying, come, follow me. That's where he starts. And he takes that community and he tells them, you're going to be a community now. You're going to love one another when I leave. And then the scripture is coming at the end of that speech. It says, you will look, depend on each other and the world will know about me because they'll look at your community. Your community. How does it respond with one another? And that community will be bound. Bound together by, by the Spirit of God. And I will be among you. And you will be with the Father. That is the heart of Christianity. By the time I graduated from seminary, I understood what it meant to be in community. We prayed together. We ate together. We laughed together. We cried together. We shared our experiences together. Other folks' families were our families. And I really mean that. We really felt that. And that's what God wants for all of us. And in these times... We're beginning to see how much we crave a community. We value it. I'm proud of our little church. I'm proud of our little church because in the last almost, well, 12 years, almost 13, we really have begun to focus on each other beyond what we used to. We were good community before, but we've really started taking an interest in one another. We've really started to be cohesive. Our children enjoy being in the midst of the community. Our adults, our elderly. And I think that that, that will be a challenge to do, but I think God is showing other people they need that kind of community, our kind of community. The kind that churches, small churches really have. So, in the midst of all this, I see God working with each of us to help us see where the good is, what is being done, how we are being brought together, how we're still connected. Now the idea of the community of, of the saints, when we have communion, when we are able to have communion together again, when we talk about the, saint, the saints around us and the saints that have gone before us, how we are all still one community, that will make more sense. Because those who have gone before us that we cannot see are still connected to us. Just like those of us who are in isolation are still connected to each other. I've gone on more than usual. It's because I really hope that this church recognizes the good that we have with community. If all we offer, folks, is the very thing that Christ gave to these disciples, just each other, sit, love one another, and everyone will know. Everyone will know me. That's all that was ever asked of us. And the community we make is all that everybody out there without one ever needs. Love one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
now let us pray. God of all creation, we are separated from one another through no fault of our own. We have different views and opinions about this separation. Not all of them are kind. Not all of them are well informed and most certainly some of them do not give you the honor and glory you deserve from us. But we express them and we express them without compassion for others and without consideration of your command to love one another. Forgive us where we act out of our self-focused desire to protect our individual freedom. Remind us that through your son's very words, we are told if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. God, we hear you clearly when the Bible speaks, but we grow deaf when we are inconvenienced for the sake of others well-being. Help us to measure our, our concern for self against our care for your other children so that all of us remain healthy and safe. Our loving God, through you we are all granted many gifts, material gifts, spiritual gifts, gifts of relationship, and many others. Through your Son, we are granted the greatest gift of all, to be able to know the gift of life with you. Through Christ, we catch a glimpse of who you are. Through Christ, we are taught how to live, how we are to live. Through Christ, we are shown how to love one another and then given the grace to do it. Thank you for these gifts and all other gifts that you have given us, both those we have recognized and those which we have not. Christ, you heal and make whole many people daily. We lift up all those who suffer as we find ourselves in this separated state. For those who are isolating alone and are wanting another human's presence, for those who are isolating with others and want a moment of solitude. For those who are ill and separated from loved ones and those whose loved ones, whose loved one is ill and separated from them. For those who grieve the loss of a friend or a family member. For those who face, who now face unemployment, underemployment and financial insecurity for those who have no shelter to shelter in pla place. We pray for all of these. We also pray for the family and friends of Diane Collins upon her death, and for those we now name in the silence of our hearts. Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant them peace, comfort, healing, and wholeness, all according to your will. And finally, Holy Spirit, come into our individual hearts and bind us all together into the one body of Christ. Bind us, heart and soul, with one another so that we become your heart and hands in this world that so desperately needs you now and in the days to come. We pray all these things in your name through the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, now that I'm getting a minor baptism out here as it starts to rain, I'd like to give you a charge and a blessing. Remember, it's not about us, about us personally. The world does not center around each of us. 
The world centers around God and God's love. So be that love in the world, even if you are separated. Find ways, because as you practice it now, so you will be able to practice it later. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen.